Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. So um, I'm Jonathan Sobel. Um, I'm currently a postdoc at University of Lausanne. But uh, today I'm not going to talk about my work. I'm going to talk about my hobby, uh, namely sequencing uh, beer DNA. So um, we had very great talk uh, yesterday. Those were very technical. Here the philosophy is really to try to um, communicate with a very broad audience. So all the, the concepts are very simplified and uh, this is addressed to a very general public. Um, so let me tell you a bit more about the, the context of this uh, project. So basically, is it possible to do science outside of academia or industry? Uh, in an association or in a biohacker space, for instance? So the short answer is yes, but uh, of course you have many constraints. You don't have the same infrastructure. It's difficult to get, uh, for instance, enzyme to perform a, a qPCR or stuff like that. Um, this project has been um, initiated in a vibrant community, uh, namely Hackwarium. So it's uh, the biohacker space uh, uh, in Lausanne. It's a three years old association. And uh, our aim is uh, to uh, develop uh, biology and more generally science oriented projects, bio art, education, workshops. We are doing outreach. And um, of course, we are uh, implicating uh, citizens, uh, so non-scientists, uh, for instance, designers, um, uh, and uh, as well, engineers, and so on. So as I just said, our uh, main concern is really to communicate, to communicate uh, among uh, the, the association with uh, people with a different background, different knowledge, but more generally to communicate to uh, the, 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 the general public. And basically, why is it important? Um, our regulation, at least in Switzerland, is voted by the, the general public, and they need to know about really uh, um, sequencing, for instance, or uh, uh, in order to, to vote the regulations or even the, the, the credits for, for this type of project. Why beers? Because I love beers, I must say, uh, I drink a lot of beers. Uh, um, and more than that, beers is a, is a fermented product. Uh, it contains uh, different uh, elements, such as yeast, hops, um, and even water that may contain bacteria. And uh, all these uh, different uh, ingredients may contain DNA. And of course, there is a, a huge variety of, uh, of beers, and uh, this is why it's kind of interesting to, to, uh, to study the, the DNA inside of the, the commercial and the craft beers. Basically, we aim at mapping beer at a molecular level to provide an open knowledge base to help drinkers to choose their favorite beers or to discover new beers based on our analysis. But um, we want as well to help home brewers um, to, to define new recipes, to, to create new beers, and microbreweries, for instance, for their uh, uh, quality control analysis. Uh, so all this knowledge base can be, can be used for, for that. Um, we, uh, with this project, as I said, we went outside, we went to festivals, we went to a conference, and uh, we tried to communicate with, uh, with the public with a cargo bike where we were testing beer direct directly and we were uh, discussing, for instance, uh, the PCR um, and why these uh, DNA data are useful and important. And for instance, of course, how can we exploit the, the, the information of the, the beer DNA? But um, um, in, an, in a larger way, uh, why their own DNA data are critical and there are a lot of ethical issues around that. And it was a way to really start discussing with them and telling them about uh, really the, the new technology and so on. Um, money, okay, this is great. <laughs> you know that in academia, uh, basically, uh, you write a, a grant, you forget about it for three months, and then you get a negative answer. Uh, basically, that's what happened for us as well. <laughs> and of course, it was more difficult because we are not an, a recognized institution, so um, funding agency uh, uh, did, did not trust us and didn't want to, to give us some money, so we had to, to uh, adopt another strategy. So we, we did a crowdfunding campaign. 
Um, and this experience was very, uh, very interesting because we had to communicate about the whole project, about the goal of the project, about how we will handle the data, what we will uh, do with, with this data from the very beginning. And we, we had to, to do a media coverage in order to, to, uh, to get bakers for, for this project. And um, two years ago, we succeeded to gather uh, 10,000 Swiss francs to, to start the, the sequencing of, uh, of beers. So it's time for Bureau Mix. Basically, our workflow was uh, that um, the, the people who baked our project on Kickstarter were able to nominate a beer, and then we were sampling it with the community. We were analyzing uh, DNA, so isolating DNA, performing a, a, a PCR for ITS sequence, and uh, then we performed the, the bioinformatics analysis. So here I show a bit the, our dream setup. So it's with the, with the Bento and with a Minayan uh, uh, sequencer. Unfortunately, uh, till now we don't have a Minayan sequencer. So we were um, uh, working with the, the, the facility, uh, the genomic facility from the University of Lausanne for the actual sequencing part. But all the sample preparation and the library prep were done uh, inside our uh, hackerspace. Um, then uh, we performed as well workshop to explain to people how to extract uh, DNA from, from their favorite beers. Uh, and it was very fun to, to, uh, to do that because of course we were drinking a lot of beers during this process. Uh, so so it, was, it was really, really nice. And uh, after that, um, I'm the, inform the bioinformatician of the project. So I performed a short read alignment um, with uh, uh, an ITS uh, sequence database. So basically, for just for the, the, the technical uh, details, uh, I, I build an index with uh, BWA, with this uh, ITS uh, sequence database, and then I simply align the, 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 the fast queue, uh, the reads, uh, um, from the beers to, to this uh, uh, ITS database. So it's a very straightforward pipeline. It's uh, the simplest I could do. And uh, I, I guess it's the easiest one to, to understand. So there is no fancy algorithm uh, behind. It's just pure uh, uh, ITS count per beer. So for the results, um, at the end, we, we succeed to get uh, 39 beers uh, sequence uh, with uh, our targeted uh, approach. Um, you can find the, the, the raw data in this uh, SRA database using this identifier and uh, all the methods and the quality control and the process tables and the, the, the protocols are uh, in our uh, GitHub repository. Um, so if you want to have a, a look at this data, please do uh, it and uh, you know, come to me and uh, we, can, we can discuss, maybe we can test some of your pipeline. Uh, for instance, uh, there was this uh, presentation of yesterday, yet another uh, metagenomic uh, uh, tool. So <laughs> that could be, uh, for, for instance, uh, a nice um, data set to, to play with. Um, and then about the results. So basically, in the A panel, you can see uh, our list of beers and the, the variety of uh, ITS that were present in the beer. And we have a group where we have uh, more than, than, than 40 ITS that were detected. And interestingly, this group of beers are um, self-fermented beers, like Lambic, um, so with a, a less controlled uh, uh, fermentation process. And it's kind of funny uh, to, to see that the, 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 the variety of fungal species are more important in those beers. Um, then in the, in the B panel, you can see um, uh, all the detected um, ITS with, uh, so the, the different fungal species with more than two, uh, so detected in more than two beers. And we have a, we have a whole group of uh, Saccharomyces that are present in almost every beer. And we have some, some uh, uh, other uh, species that are really specific to one or two beers. So that's very interesting and that can help to trace really uh, uh, where uh, the beer come from and, uh, and to have an idea of, uh, of uh, maybe the, the impact on the taste. So that's one of the perspective of the project. Uh, then through this uh, iterative process um, <laughs> with uh, data analysis, uh, beer thinking, drinking, data analysis and so on, I, 
I, so it's, 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 a, it's a, it was very intense for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I came to, uh, to, to this nice visualization um, where you can see uh, all the beers um, in the y-axis and all the, the, the detected ITS and um, the different colors represent the, the, um, the, the detection level, so the, the number of reads per ITS. And uh, this allows to, to cluster the different beers together and see which one are, are somehow related based on their uh, DNA content. Um, and with that, uh, I want to, to wrap up. Uh, and so basically, uh, we succeed to, to sequence 39 beers um, that uh, improve our knowledge about uh, beer DNA content. Uh, the idea was to trigger a discussion about uh, molecular biology techniques such as PCR and sequencing. And uh, we could uh, uh, um, evoke using this ambassador project the ethical issue regarding DNA related uh, data. For the perspective of this project, um, we would like to involve other uh, citizen science lab uh, worldwide uh, to sequence their own beers or even uh, people that are in academia and have some space in their sequencing uh, machine, uh, so maybe one lane, and they could load some, some of their favorite beers and then upload their data um, on, on a repository, and there we could grow our uh, uh, knowledge base about, uh, about beer DNA. Uh, then we want to investigate other markers like, like 16S RNA uh, sequence. We want to do as well a whole uh, metagenome sequencing, potentially with a mean ion, if we succeed to, to get one. Um, and of course, we want to develop this beer knowledge database. We want to uh, help microbrewer to do their uh, quality control and um, Later on, uh, we want to uh, uh, explore the relationship between uh, the, the beer DNA content and the taste. Um, with that, I will uh, finish my talk. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the Beer Decoded team, especially uh, Gianpaolo Rondo, who uh, was the main leader of, uh, of the group and who really uh, initiated this, this project. Um, as well as Luc Henry, who uh, funded the, the Hackquarium uh, uh, hackerspace uh, three years ago, and the other people involved, as well uh, our baker from Kickstarter, uh, the Vitality Cluster, um, and of course the OBF uh, uh, committee for awarding me with the OBF uh, travel grant. Thank you very much for your attention.